In part one of the next two videos, we'll explore the basics of the new Easy Roller from Cimarron International. First off, don't let the name of this machine fool you. It has no relationship to the original Easy Roller we did a video on nearly 10 years ago. It's a completely different design, a different manufacturer, a different brand owner, and its performance is orders of magnitude superior to the original, and for that matter, to any other auger design we've yet seen. In the much shorter part two of this video, we'll demonstrate some tips and tricks that allow this machine to rise to the top of our list of all other auger injectors. Simron's new Easy Roller is a spectacular looking little machine. This highly precision electronic auger injector is like no other, having several major advantages over other auger designs. First, it's very small, only about 10 inches long by 2.5 inches tall and about 3 inches wide. It comes with a small hopper attachment as well as a cleaning brush and an extra auger. You'll notice throughout this video that this machine has a variable speed control for the motor and while we personally recommend using it only on the slowest speed setting and on the highest tension bar setting, it was felt by the designers that there may be times when a certain larger cuts of tobacco or higher moisture content may need a bit more speed. However, we found after many months of testing that the slowest speed and the highest tension bar setting works best with every tobacco and condition we've thrown at it. In addition to the variable speed control, this machine has an independent central wire running through the auger that is attached directly to the motor. This allows for the tobacco to be constantly agitated within the auger during injection, functioning much like that of the agitator in a washing machine. The tobacco does not stick inside the auger long enough to be ground up, which can be a major cause of the premature ash dropping that most auger designs suffer from. Sure, if you flick the stick hard enough, the hot ash may still come off, but that tendency is dramatically reduced by both lower speed and, and the central wire, and also by a few extra tips you'll find in part two. Now let's take a closer look at the Easy Roller. On the side of the machine you can see the speed and tension controls. Moving the speed control slider will give you an infinite number of speeds. While the tension bar is set at three for now, we use this machine almost exclusively at the highest tension setting of five. The two buttons on the top of the machine are for depressing the tension arm to put a tube on, and while the tension bar button makes putting the tube on easy, the tension bar can be lowered directly by a finger as well. The other button activates the motor itself. As you can see, there is quite a wide range of speeds, though as we will continue to mention, we find the slowest speed setting produces the most stable sticks. Using the uh, included hopper attachment, you can put more tobacco in at one time, but we seldom use it. As with all injector injectors, it's important to feather the tobacco as you put it into the chamber. Also notice how clean the nozzle is on this first injection. More on that in a moment. This first injection uses the lowest speed. We stop the motor just as the tube reaches the end, resulting in a longer overhang of tobacco, which is always ideal for tapping down after making a stick. This overhang is, is, is almost as long as one finds with most spoon injectors, at least the good ones. So you can tap it down and, and make a really nice, evenly packed stick. Now for this next injection, we'll use the highest speed setting. Always quickly clean the nozzle before putting the tube on each time. You can see how not doing so makes putting the tube on much more difficult. Notice how much more tobacco also sprays into the catch tray as the tube shoots off the nozzle. This reveals the fact that high speed injectors not only chop the tobacco more but make less stable sticks. You'll also notice that the sticks made at this speed have more of a gap between the tobacco and the end of the tube. In other words, no overhang. Without a doubt, the slowest speed clearly provides better results. You see how that tobacco sprayed? Ah, uh, really sprayed. And you can see the lack of overhang. Now here we're going to show the burn characteristics of the stick we made at the higher speed. And even though it's not nearly as stable as one made at the slowest speed, the ash is very stable and remains straight as it burns. So let's take a look at the central wire 
mentioned at the beginning to see how this innovation improved things, improves things even at a higher speed. It's a pretty stable stick, considering it was made at high speed. Flicking it even with my ring finger, it, it doesn't come off. We'll have to disassemble the machine a bit to show you the wire. And the disassembly is quite easy. Um, you, but here's the wire, and again, it is attached directly to the motor and is independent of the auger. You loosen the little neural knobs. The first time you might have to use a screwdriver put into those little slots, but after that and from and future forward, only finger tighten this. You never need to screw it down hard. Slowly slip the um, nozzle attachment off. Then you can pull the auger out, hold on, holding onto the back of the machine, gently pull forward. The auger comes out and now you'll see the wire. What we want to do here, we don't recommend you do uh, often because it could damage the wire. But we want to show the, the revolutions of the wire uh, with no auger there. You can see how wide the path it, it, it cuts. Um, now remember, that will be happening inside the auger, but it keeps the tobacco loose in the auger and keeps it from binding up and being broken up and crushed. The auger slips back on really easily. There's a little hole in the back of the tobacco chamber that the, that the pin in the auger fits right into. Now we're going to run the auger, uh, the whole assembly with the auger going. This is at, at slow speed. See how stable that auger looks? So that stays in an almost perfectly straight line. When we turn up uh, the speed, watch how wildly the auger fluctuates. Again, this is what causes the tobacco to be de degraded and, and broken up and eventually causes a less stable stick. Then it's time to put the um, nozzle attachment back on and remember just finger tightening the little neural knobs is all you need to do. All in all, a very easy machine to service. We really like this thing, and for people who like auger injectors, we don't think you can do any better. Um, there'll be more information in part two, little tips and tricks that'll help you use this auger machine even more successfully. So go on to part two of this video.